Earth Carers course. Who's done the Earth Carers course? Well, that's impressive. Thank you. Uh, and also, since then, she's been volunteering with Earth Carers. And she's done things like organise the Less Is More Festival. Who's heard of the Less Is More Festival? One person, they call a couple, eh? There you go. Um, and she's also been volunteering to do things like the Plastic Free July evaluation, which was last year. And she also does um, worm farm talks. Who's got a worm farm at home? Well done. Uh, Christine. Yeah, I have worm farmers in the garden, mate. What's that? I need a farm. You don't need to. No, they're already in the garden. Well, there you go. You got to must have a healthy garden then. That's a good sign of a healthy garden. Fro frogs and worms. Um, Christine is passionate about plants and also conservation. She works as a biologist for the Department of Parks and Wildlife. And they're going to change their name soon, is that right? Okay. What are they changing their name to? Uh, Department of um, Biodiversity, Conservation and Attractions. Attractions? Attractions. <laughs> Attractive. <laughs> oh, attractions like me, no. Was that biodiversity? Was that biodiversity? Biodiversity, Conservation Cons and, and Attractions. attractions. Will, that's a mouthful. Yeah, um, some of her zero waste highlights include getting all her work colleagues to bring their own mug on the coffee run, which is impressive, and also doing the plastic uh, auditing at the last Royal Show. So would you please welcome Christine Allen. Hello, thanks for staying. So who's heard of Plastic Free July? Oh wow, that's awesome. And who's uh, actually doing the challenge this year? You, yeah? How's it going? Good? It's okay? It's very <laughs> difficult. It is. It's very yeah. difficult. So I saw this film back in 2012 um, and I remember going to the supermarket for the first time after watching Bag It and just standing there and just being like, oh, this is way too overwhelming and feeling a bit powerless, like what could one person do really? And um, so I decided um, I, I really did want to take some of the steps that um, he was he was mentioning, and also Beth Terry. So she's written a lot of books. Um, if you look her up, she's um, and she was also talked about you starting as a one person, and then it has a flow-on effect. So I decided um, to not um, buy my way out of plastic. So to just instead sort of see what I already had. So I already shopped with green bags or these sort of reusable bags and I, I already had a, a keep cup so that was a good start. Um, I already bought my coffees. Who has a keep cup? Or a, oh that's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, if, if you already have a glass cup or a mug or that's just a good start if you're a big coffee drinker or go out for coffees. Um, so and then I sort of took the journey very slowly. It's been five years for me to slowly take things up in and as the people in the movies were saying, you just take little steps as you go along. And um, so a few other, th oh, another thing is a, the water bottle. So, so we need <coughs> you to take that around as well. If, who, who walks around with the water bottle, most people? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's really good. Um, and so what I did was I was still shopping at Woolies and, um, you know, the big grocery stores, but just trying to buy less things in plastic. So there's sometimes pasta there without the plastic lining inside, and there's oats there with no plastic. So just doing it as chocolate, so I could still have chocolate, and that was fine. So I was very happy about that. Um, but then there was the unavoidables still for me, um, I was still drinking milk, um, I was eating meat and cheese and so that took longer, those things take longer and that's totally fine, like I think 2012 I felt like I failed Plastic Free July but I don't think there is such a thing as failing because I, don't, I think just having a go and being aware yourself is a really big first step. And when I talked to my mum, she also said, oh, I failed. And I was like, no, you don't fail at it. You just have a go. And it's all about awareness. So, um, yeah. And then I quickly realised that I would need to find a bulk store. So who goes to a bulk store here? Where is the closest bulk store? To uh, I go to Frio. I'm not sure about here. There's one in uh, Mundaring. Where's this country in Mundaring? Yeah. So, uh, there's one in Florida. What's one in Florida called? 
There's one no, floret. Sauce. What is it? Sauce. Yeah, that's it. Sauce. Yeah. yeah. I don't like the sauce. What's it called? The angry almond. Angry almond. Yeah, I went to that one. Dunham Walton. Dunham Walton. Yeah, Beach Road. And there's also organic on Charles. I don't think they do bulk though. And then there's cassoulas. They do. Do they? Oh. There's um, yeah. Kikula Brothers in the city, yeah. and there's Kikula Sisters up in Nolamara. And the same Frio as well. Yep, and Frio. So, if you haven't been to a bulk store, um, even just going in and just having a look, you don't have to buy anything, just seeing what's there, um, see what you can start sort of making or taking along with you. Um, so, I remember, yeah, um, I went along and I had, so I really also realised that I would need some produce bags like you guys. And um, I went to a, a produce bag making session and um, I made a little bag and then I took it to my bulk store and I was really nervous that I was going to get into trouble <laughs> taking a bag. It's just funny things in your head, like you being a bit different. Everybody else has got the plastic bag and you're the only one with the... And now it doesn't even matter, but it's the first time you do... Even like the first time you use this and you've always used your single-use cup and you use this and you really... You know, sometimes it's a bit worrying, but it's actually quite empowering when you start um, getting used to it. Whenever I take my cup, I always ask for a discount. Do you? And I usually get one. You do? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, you can try that as well. <laughs> and then, so what I started doing was taking um, the reusable bags and then decanting it into a um, glass jar. So that was um, different jars that I've collected over the years. And um, so just now I've got lots of jars with sort of bulk produce that I um, use to make things. And, um, and I also realised that I would need a um, heavy duty blender. So uh, that was further down the line when I was making my own dips and peanut butters and, and things like that. And actually it's been really useful. I make my own nut milks and stuff, so I don't drink dairy milk at home anymore. I make cashew nut milk and almond milk and it's actually much tastier than the um, Tetra Pak. Almond milk is very watery. Mm -hmm. and, with, and So, um, yeah, the heavy duty blender was quite useful um, in the transition. So, um, yeah, I've definitely had my ups and downs. I took, I, I washed my hair with apple cider vinegar because it's quite good um, for curly hair. And I took it on the plane on a business trip to Canberra in a little jar and it exploded in my luggage. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember walking into the hotel and I'm like, oh, this hotel smells really bad. <laughs> <laughs> and it followed me all the way to my room and I opened it up and all my business clothes had um, the apple cider vinegar smell. So <laughs> nice um, late night clean of my clothes before I had to do the meetings the next day. So yeah, I've had sort of those funny sort of situations and then some really good ones like the one where I took, you know, slowly got my colleagues at Plastic Free July to take their cup and we did it for a month in, you know, take your mug and it made it like a bit of a game, I suppose. So like, who's got their mug before we go on the walk? Like, just making sure and just um, turn it into a fun thing so it doesn't have to be so serious in the workplace. Um, yeah, and it, I've just taken it step by step, I suppose. And even taking my little containers to ask for feta cheese at Woolworths or taking it, you know, at the deli section, take my own container and ask for, and sometimes they don't really want to and <coughs> there's um, regulations and things, but then you find another one and it's, it's fine. So it's not true, there's no, it's not there's true. no health regulation. Yeah. It's just the choice of the business to say yeah. no. Yeah. Yeah, but if you don't want to argue, if you, you can... Oh, I like to argue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I think uh, it's it's all about the journey and it's, uh, for me, the, uh, two really positive things was um, joining, the, finding out there is a community of people that also do this weird stuff <laughs> and, um, and joining them and they're actually a really awesome group of people. So if you go on to um, Zero Waste Perth Facebook page, um, I don't know how many people are on that already. Yeah, a few? Yeah, awesome. Yeah, so it's, it's quite a supportive group and you get to meet people um, more and more at these sort of events and... That's how I met Christine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right, through the Facebook page, yeah. 
And then there's also the Pl Plastic Free to Lie website, and it has lots of resources. And um, if you want to even take a little, well, it's a bit wet in the rain, but um, what I've been doing this Plastic Free to Lie is going to cafes and saying, um, would you put this up on your on your window? So even if you're you're going through your journey and you sort of spread the word by taking these um, to another your favourite cafe or something. So they have these templates on the website that you can print off and, and pass around. So there's one that just says we're you know we're supporting, and then there's offering a 50% discount or 50, 50 cents. Cent. Yeah. 50% cent would be <laughs> awesome. Yeah. A 50 cent discount um, for the keep cup, and then there's another one um, with the bags. So if you take it to a bakery and um, re recommend that people take their own bags or even a butcher and stuff like that. So there's those templates there, and there's also ideas for events that you can run. Plastic free morning tea is another <coughs> way to get your friends involved. You, you sort of challenge your friends or family to bring a, a dish without plastic or make it and, um, and take it along and have a bit of a conversation how you did it, and if you went okay. And so it's a, just a good way to get the conversation started. Um, and the second thing for me um, over this journey was how. Um, I think Jeff mentioned it as well. So a lot of the food, um, some of the food that we eat um, that's covered in plastic is often junk food as well. So <laughs> I think the, the quality of my food was actually improving and my diet improved. So I used to have a lot of, sort of problems with my, my stomach and stuff and eating more whole foods and making my own foods and actually was actually good for my health as well. So. I wasn't just taking the plastic out, I was actually eating better as well. And um, it was actually really tasty, like I, I would never buy a basil pesto anymore from a plastic container because it's really, really tasty when you make it. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just common sense, as he also said. Making your own stuff, it does take a little bit of time as well. But um, the results are really, really rewarding. So yeah, have a go, see what you can do. and. And also realise your limits and your situation, it's all about. So for me, I still have cravings for, for yoghurt. I've tried making my own, I've tried, but you know, Greek yoghurt, sometimes I just really have a craving for it and I go and, I go and buy it. So in a plastic container. So <laughs> and then there's other people that really love chips and they can't, you know, they really need them and they go out without them for a number of months and then and that's okay. We're all on a different journey, so have a go. And yeah, does anyone have any questions about anything or thoughts or feedback? One way we were told on the Earth Care of course about reducing waste is the pamphlets that are on the table. They don't take a pamphlet, take a photo of it with your phone. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you don't because you'll take it home, you'll read it, and you'll chuck it in the bin. But if you've got it on your phone, yeah, mm -hmm. if it's any consolation, it's, it's not waste. They're all rope recycled paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, any other thoughts or uh, ideas of um, other people's from what their experiences? You said you made your own pesto. Did you grow your own basil as well? No. <laughs> I've tried <coughs> basil many times. I live in an apartment, so yeah. I've and. Yeah, I've tried and then it dies, it gets eaten by caterpillars and then I try again. So is there a community garden where you live? Um, yes, there is. Yeah, but I just, yeah, I haven't joined yet. <laughs> I've got plenty of space in mind if you want to join mine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, making yoghurt's really easy. You it must is. be able to do it. It's yeah. so simple. Don't buy it, make it. <laughs> Greek style? Yeah. Greek style? Just leave it in there for longer. The longer you leave it, the more flavour it gets and the more Greek style it gets. Yep, okay. If you only do I'll it for a few again. hours, it's not very mild. If you do yeah. it for like 8 or 10 or 12 hours, it comes out like Greek style. Yep, wow. okay. Yes? Um, my biggest struggle is like detergents, soaps, yeah, and I guess like hair wash and like moisturiser <laughs> and stuff. Yep. And I don't know what you do. Uh, so some of the bulk stores does have that in bulk, have shampoos and conditioners and moisturisers and detergents. Yep. Okay. So Planet Arc do. Planet Arc. And what do you, like, how do you, that? so I don't understand, is how do you take a jar 
and then how does that whole process work? I just don't really understand. Uh, so if you go, to, there's a one in the, uh, called the Clean Food Store in Shenton Park. Yeah. And um, you take your own container, and they have um, weights. Oh, like um, you can tear you tear your um, bottle. So you, um, and you weigh it before. So an empty weight, and then you fill it up with whatever you. And they all have a um, different um, number, so you take down the number and also what you've what you've taken, and then you then they weigh it as a full weight. So it gives you just how much liquid that you. So yeah, it's all, and they have a little instructions there, and you can always ask the staff if you're a bit st stuck with anything. But um, yeah, they're very happy for you to take your own glass containers or plastic containers or anything. Anything that you have, yeah. What, what if she wants to make her own products? Yeah. Making your own, you yeah. That? that would be, there's lots of websites for that. Yep. Uh, can you think of any? Oh, there's, if you just Google anything you want to make, you'll get videos of them doing it, yeah. or step by step videos, and also recipes. And there's things like soap, detergents, they're all easy to make. Mm -hmm. If you do the Earth Carers course, okay. you'll, um, to get some information on how to make them yourself, but yeah, there's, you just Google it and you'll find it everywhere. And they're not difficult, like I can do them, so they're not difficult. I don't use shampoo, obviously, but I use other things. So. <laughs> no, I do use soap though. So it's easy. If I can do it, then anyone can do it. It's pretty easy. Is there an Earth Carers course in Mount Hawthorne? Yeah. The next one will be in August, I think. So go to Earth Carers Course North. Facebook page, if you're on Facebook, okay. and just click that you want to join up, that's free. Mm. Yeah, it's a really good course. Yeah, what if you don't do Facebook? You, Facebook. Just go to, you can go to the Is website, right? <laughs> Web, yeah. MRC, Midday Regional Council, they run the courses. Who's right. heard of Peg Davies, anyone? Yeah, is she wonderful or what? She's yeah. yeah. Once you meet her once, you never forget her, so she's passionate about this stuff. If you're willing to take the challenge, your son actually had real problems with his scalp and using shampoo, so he's actually stopped washing his hair mm. with any chemicals at all and just uses water. And for the first couple of weeks, it was a bit rank, but once he got through that, it's fine and it doesn't smell, or his hair's fine. Okay. Just naturally cleans itself. Yeah. Doesn't use soap. Oh, wow. And he doesn't smell. And it didn't have the, the problem cleared no, up. He's not getting dreadlocks or anything. So he doesn't use any okay. chemicals. <laughs> any dreadlocks aren't forming there. No. Mm -hmm. He's not forming dreadlocks or anything. No. No, he's growing no. his hair. So you don't oh, okay. have to use it. You can, yeah, yeah. you know, if you're willing to take the challenge for the put up with it for the first couple of weeks. You can, yeah. First few weeks, you can actually stop using it. Let's stabilise. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions for Christine? Alright, we might wrap it up there. So we have a round of applause, please.